Today our discussion will be about liver cirrhosis and portal hypertension. Let's get started. Liver cirrhosis is a diffuse bridging fibrosis that is via stellate cells and regenerative nodules as you can see in this picture. Here are regenerative nodules and there is a splenomegaly. So this disrupts normal architecture of the liver. The increased risk of hepatocellular carcinoma is the condition in liver cirrhosis. The etiology include alcohol in 60 to 70 percent of cases in the US. The non-alcoholics tear to hepatitis, chronic viral hepatitis, autoimmune hepatitis, biliary disease, Genetic and metabolic disorders are also the common causes of liver cirrhosis. So the first outcome of liver cirrhosis is portal hypertension. In portal hypertension, there is increased pressure in portal venous system. The common causes of portal hypertension is cirrhosis. Yes, it's the most common cause in Western countries. The second is vascular obstruction that is due to portal vein thrombosis, Burchari syndrome, that is a condition in which there is the portal vein obstruction that drains the liver. There is a triad of the symptoms used for Burchari syndrome is abdominal pain, ascites, and effects of cirrhosis on different body systems. First of all, we will talk about integumentary system. The first condition occur is jaundice, that is the yellowing of the skin and sclera due to increased bilirubin in the blood. So the second condition is spidery angiomas, that will be the easing. You can see the spider veins on the body of a patient. And there will be palmar erythema that is a kind of rash, purpura, and petechia that is due to platelet dysfunction or decreased platelet count in the blood. The effects now we will discuss about the effects of portal hypertension. So, in portal hypertension, as there will be increased blood in the portal vein that will eventually put the pressure back. On the mesenteric arteries and there will be esophageal viruses and there will be bleeding from the mouth that will known as hematomasis and gastric viruses due to inside traumas and injuries in the GIT system so there will be melina you can see easily caput medosa there will be a veins on the abdomen of the patient that are due to ascites or distension of the abdomen and there will be ascites that is due to increase fluid in the abdominal cavity and anorectal varices that is a kind of anorectal bleeding that is due to trauma or injury inside the rectum all is central nervous system there will be hepatic encephalopathy due to increased amount of ammonia and other waste products in the blood they can cross the blood brain barrier easily and they will eventually reach inside the brain and they will cause hepatic encephalopathy due to liver cirrhosis as liver is not detoxifying all these to toxic substances so it is defined as reversible decline in neurologic dysfunction it is due to increased inhibitory neurotransmission which is GABA and decreased excitatory neurotransmission which is glutamate and acetylcholine there will be another condition regarding to neurologic symptoms are estrexes so that are flapping tremors when you ask the patient to extend your arms and ask the patient to put your hands upward and backward he will automatically continue the same pattern that is known as flapping tremors the hands will move 
forward and backward continuously. The system involved in liver cirrhosis is gastrointestinal system. The first condition is anorexia that is loss of appetite, nausea and vomiting, dull abdominal pain and fetal hepaticus that is due to ammonia and dimethyl sulfur affected by liver cirrhosis is hematologic system or you can say our blood system. The first condition is thrombocytopenia that are decreased platelet count which will eventually lead to bleeding. Yes, another condition is anemia that are decreased RBC count and the third condition is coagulation disorders. The coagulation is a process in which the liquid kind of like blood is converted to semi-solid or solid form that is like clotting. So if there is coagulation disorders, there will be no clotting. So that is same like bleeding. Yes. Another condition is splenomegaly. The enlargement of spleen also occur in liver cirrhosis. Another system involved in liver cirrhosis is our renal system yes there is a syndrome that is hepatorenal syndrome there is involvement of renal vasoconstriction in this syndrome on metabolic basis there will be hyperbilirubinemia and hyponatremia the hyperbilirubinemia is a condition in which there is increased bilirubin in the bilirubinemia and another condition, hyponatremia. Liver cirrhosis on our cardiovascular system, there will be cardiomyopathy in which when there is severe cirrhosis, it will eventually lead to high output heart failure due to increased amount of blood in our blood vessels due to splunking vasodilation and intrahepatic or mesenteric arteriovenous shunts so that will eventually lead to peripheral edema and ascites bilateral basilar crackles jugular venous distension and hepatomegaly from venous congestion is peripheral edema that will due to hypoalbuminemia yes the one of the function of liver is to produce albumin that when there is decreased amount of albumin inside our blood the fluid from our blood vessels eventually leaked out to interstitial spaces outside the blood vessels that is why there will be peripheral edema in liver cirrhosis another system involved in liver cirrhosis is Reproductive system. In reproductive system, there will be testicular atrophy, gynecomastia, and amenorrhea. So, factor 7 part of extrinsic pathway has the shortest of life. The effects of portal hypertension there will be esophageal viruses that is bleeding from the mouth, which is also known as hematomasis there will be some kind of trauma inside our esophagus that is why there will be there will be amount of blood in in vomiting so another condition is gastric viruses that is due to injury inside the stomach or any kind of trauma that will lead to melina melina is a condition when there is amount of blood inside the stool is present Another condition is cap caput medosa. These are like veins present on the abdomen that are due to distension of abdomen. Another condition is ascites that is due to portal hypertension effect as the blood moves back from the portal vein to the mesenteric supply and blood fluid leaks out from the blood vessels to the abdominal cavity and the fluid will remain there this condition is known as ascites another possible condition is anorectal viruses that is a condition in which there will rectum or is involved or injured and there will be bleeding from that part 
The last system involved in liver cirrhosis is our reproductive system. There will be testicular atrophy, gynecomastia, and amenorrhea. So gynecomastia is a condition when there is abnormal enlargement of our chest like in males and uh, amenorrhea is a condition when there is no menses in females so here is the factor 7 that is a part of extrinsic pathway has the shortest half-life of all coagulation factors PT assesses the extrinsic and common pathways of coagulation and is the first to become abnormal in liver disease, hypoalbuminemia, elevated bilirubin levels and prolonged PT, PT are signs of inadequate liver function due to liver failure and indicate a poor prognosis in cirrhotic patients. So that is a triad hypoalbuminemia, elevated bilirubin level and prolonged PT. So these are the signs which can easily seen in a patient when his liver is totally failed.